Thank you for joining me. I'm Pastor J. Dylan Proctor, and today we're going to be asking the question, do you live in the cell? You see, the world around us, it doesn't actually want you to, to live and walk in the creation which God made. And by that, I don't just mean who he made you to be, but also in the, the nature that exists outside. God actually made a world that was good, true, and beautiful, as we find there in Genesis 1, that mysterious good which God sees in the things which he had made. And I want to kind of begin today's quick little study with three different scriptures. One, I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2, which says, Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. And you know what? You can look around in our world right now and say, you know what? Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. And if we really understand what the word vanity means in the English language, it means something which is empty. It's pointless. It can be absorbed with all manner of excitement, thrills, frills, bright colors. But at the end of the day, it's just totally empty. There's nothing of any value there. It is all work, all sound and fury, signifying nothing with, again, just the void at the end of it. So Ecclesiastes 1-2 has that line, and that sounds very familiar to our world, vanity, vanity, because the world wants you actually living in a, in a padded cell. We're going to get to that in a moment. But I also want to weigh Ecclesiastes 1-2 with Colossians 1-21, where it says, And you, who were sometimes aliens and enemies within your own mind by your own wicked words, you have now been reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to be presented holy and unblameable and re unreprovable in his sight. In other words, um, and that's Ecclesi um, Colossians 1, 21 and 22, but this, this idea that you have been an enemy in your own mind, like the, the depression of the world is real. It wants you to be an enemy in your own mind, but at the same time, we choose to stay in the padded cell. We choose to stay in the place of corruption. And that's one of the things which is so interesting about deception. Deception comes to you and you willingly choose to worship the beast. You choose to be unmade. You choose to like the sexually degenerate lust which actually destroy you. And you think that you need it in order to, for it to be a part of you. In the modern world, in the modern church, we, we very much have forgotten the, the wise words of 1 Timothy 1 where it talks about people who want to be teachers of the law, but they, they don't even understand the law or they, they don't understand the things that they affirm and the, the things that they might teach. In the church, we've kind of had this laxed idea, especially with, with sexual sins and things like that, that it's okay to be tempted but not to act. That's totally ludicrous. It is, is not what Jesus teaches in the Sermon on the Mount. And also, even if you're not watching the pornography or going down to, you know, the, the strip club or whatever, if you're putting that VHS tape in the VHS of your mind and you're watching it, it's going to take hold of you and you're eventually going to go there, regardless of what the sexual sin is. Um, Sexual sins in particular are very, very corrupting in that way. So don't watch the, the tapes in your mind. Um, but we have been enemies in our mind. And deception is really good at making you choose the thing which will ultimately unmake you. And that's that's kind of where you get in Romans 1, the idea that people would be given over to the reprobate minds. Even going back to First Timothy 4, you know, you get your conscience seared and you actually think that you need the sin in order to be fulfilled. But it's ultimately rotten. That's all part of being in the padded cell. The other scripture that I wanted to look at, so Ecclesiastes 1-2, Colossians 1-21, and then also Proverbs 25-28, which talks about the man that doesn't have control over his own spirit is like a city without walls. And what you get from that is any passing army, any passing thing, it will come and it will conquer you because you don't actually have any sort of you know control over over your own spirit. You're just stuck at the whims of the world. And now that's where the world wants you to be. We're in a in a reality right now. I saw a meme the other day where it had a picture of a mattress and like the PlayStation 4 controller, PS4 controller. And the caption over it was, do we realize how small the carbon footprint is of guys that live like this? They just live in an apartment with a, you know, a PlayStation controller and they, they sleep on a mattress. And I'm thinking to myself, and the morality of our modern world, which goes along with false religions like climate change, um, they they actually would think it's virtuous to kind of live in the matrix, to sit around and play the PlayStation all day and just live in a, an ugly house, in an ugly apartment, and be totally cut off from anything that is real. Like everything around us is deliberately fake. And we don't have a lot of control over our own spirit, so we get duped by this. The message of the world... Even if you go back just a few decades, the message of our world 
And you would find this in our entertainment, our work, our school, any such venue we might go into. It gave us kind of an excess of what I would call vainglorious standards. So an excess of, of vanity that was still some sort of ecstasy involved in it. So bright, colorful things. Um, I've been talking a lot about some, some just ridiculous stuff involving models and whatnot and underwear ads and ridiculous things like that. That in and of themselves are, are kind of you know softcore pornography, so there's a little level of just basic corruption with that. And we've gone from that where you had actually attractive people that were perverting, you know, the, the beauty that God made for, for Adam and Eve to now we're at this place where now there is con- utter confusion, deliberate confusion between men and women, deliberate confusion between Adam and Eve, and, and also taken to its most hideous and disgusting way. And this is particularly bad, especially in the Eve category. Um, Eve is beautiful. She's to be desired. Um and now she she hates herself and and wants to to maim herself. It's a very very disgusting thing where we're at in the world. But back to our conversation, the world used to give us this excess of vainglorious standards where you could not look attractive enough, you couldn't be smart enough, or you couldn't have enough wealth to be considered value and to be you know to be applauded and to be desired in our culture. But now we've we've gone further down the cliff. We've exchanged one thing which was was neither healthy nor good. It was bad and corrupting to something that is actually even worse. And actually, it's good to have standards in society, but we kind of perverted those standards to be, you know, empty, vainglorious things. So I'm not ridiculing standards. I'm, I'm ridiculing all the perverted ends to that, like the, the underwear ads. But we've gone from that to something even worse. To now we're at a place where the message of the world, message of the world says this, your role models are deliberately repulsive, meaning, you know, whether it's you know, ball players or whatever, they're, they don't actually have good character. They're deliberately repulsive. The art in our world is deliberately bad. The architecture in our world is deliberately bad. And I, I even hate it when oftentimes churches, they, they want to build something really easy, really affordable, really quick. That's, that's oftentimes very practical. And that, that's very good to have a practical building. But also you actually kind of do need the stained glass windows and the, the beautiful steeple that aspires and pulls your eyes upward to when you step in the building and you see these magnificent stories just embedded even in the walls and the architecture. That actually communicates a lot that we need to be able to escape into that sort of building. And now in our world, again, the role models are deliberately bad. The art is deliberately bad. Even the hollow trinkets that you might have wanted in the past they're all deliberately expensive and out of your reach. You know, the, the price of housing is insane. And it used to be that millennials and Gen Z, I'm a millennial, Gen Z's after me, we were kind of mocked for not wanting to own a home. And then there was an, an article that came out, which all articles are trash. So I, I can't even believe I'm referencing this. They were talking about how, oh, look, millennials do want to buy a home, but they never could afford it. Um, yeah, like the, the price of things, it's not just inflation. It's much worse than inflation. And you're being told lies about inflation. It's all worse than than, than we think. But everything is actually deliberately expensive and it's further and further out of your reach. And so even when you come to the question of friendships, the friendships online are remarkably fake. And what, what happens is we're now at the point where the real life friendships are now done to kind of mimic some of the dynamics online. So you've got real friendships that are mimicking the fake friendships online. You know, see this in politics where a lot of times decisions are made based on the news cycle that it will generate. So now people are doing things in real life to replicate the fakeness of online. And it's absolutely, absolutely insane. It's like the the Alfred Hitchcock movie Vertigo come to life. It's just absolute insanity. Nobody can recognize reality anymore. And Everything is deliberately fake. The news stories are deliberately fake. The friendships are deliberately fake. And everything is just deliberately corrupt. And and everyone is locked kind of in a straitjacket. You know, live in a subdivision. Live in these tight houses where you can't go outside and appreciate the, the beauty that God has made. And you're locked in this straitjacket to stare at it all. Broken families. My grandmother correctly discerned. She saw this video about how they've got these one occupant houses that they're trying to, to market to people, not just the tiny houses, mind you. We've, we've had the tiny house phenomenon for a while, but there was a marketing campaign specifically for houses where one person would live in them, the little tiny house, minimalistic thing, one person. Again, don't store up earthly treasures. If God tells you to throw away all your earthly treasures, you better do that before the sun goes down. But if hell tells you to throw away your earthly treasures, you better actually be doubling that stuff up because hell is wanting to disarm you for a different reason than when God is calling you to let go of the the hooks and snares, which actually 
keep you in the way to hell. It's very different if God asks you to do something than if hell asks us to do something. And it, it seems like we, we've kind of forgotten that in the, the modern world. But the modern world now, the message is you're not even going to be given the nice trinkets while you wait for hell. You know, it used to be the beauty standards, you know, buy things, consume, 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 and have all these flashy things around you while you wait to go to hell. Now it is, you will be obedient to us. You will watch the pornography. You will live in the ugly house, and you will not go outside. You will just have the PlayStation and the mattress. You will you will do this, and you, we, you will have the low ESG score. You will have the low environmental score. You will, you will indulge in the sexual degeneracy, which doesn't lead to, to marriage and, and, you know, procreation and the good, the true, the beautiful. Instead, you will just do the, the most... Um, meaningless and trite, lust-based, destructive version of all that, and you will be happy. Except you won't be happy. You'll you'll never be happy at all, and you'll you'll even resent God all the more. Because what's fascinating is God made a marvelous domain for us to live in, and the world knows you're not likely to appreciate your Creator if you're chained up in the cell. One of the reasons that we're increasingly put in the cell is because that makes people resentful towards their Creator because they're cut off from it all. So to wrap all this message up, I know it's just a a short message I wanted to throw together real quick. You've got to leave the padded cell. Go outside. Go marvel at the creation that God made for you. You've been severed from nature in every extent. Go outside. All of the corrupt stuff that we find, that, that I've discussed so far, there's obviously more corrupt stuff than that, but everything I've talked about so far are corruptions that are found inside. They're found inside the house, inside the screen, inside the city. And inside everything that is the designated and official place of polite society. The world is curating a padded cell for you where you'll be cut off from nature and you'll only be surrounded by lies. I think it was really funny. As I was putting this video together and put in a tight little description there there on Facebook, it kept telling me truthless is not a word. You just thought that was kind of funny. Well, anyways, thank you for joining me. I'm Pastor Jay Dylan Proctor. God love you and have a blessed day.